Coming up on Fulton Today, police issue a reminder about the dangers of leaving a child alone in a hot car. We'll talk with an officer about the statewide awareness campaign. And we'll take you to a special engine dedication ceremony where firefighters remember fallen colleagues. Fulton Today is next. From the Government Center in downtown Atlanta, you're watching Fulton Today with Shania Chavis. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shawnya Chavis. Fulton County Police hope to avoid another tragic death by reminding motorists to double check when they are carrying young motorists. Now, the reminder comes following a string of recent deaths of kids being left alone in hot cars. Detective Melissa Parker is here now to talk to us a little bit more about this. Ma'am, welcome back to Fulton Today. Hi, Shawnya. Thank you for having me. Well, Detective, you all are joining the statewide campaign called Look Again, and you told us that you could really better show us more than you could tell us. What do you mean? Well, we did a brief demonstration on just how hot the inside of these vehicles can get uh, during the day, whether or not they're closed up or whether they're ventilated. And uh, it's a very cloudy day today, uh, very overcast. Uh, we've had thunderstorms, so we're definitely not at the hottest point of the day or as hot as it can get in the summertime. And so what did you find? Well, inside a ventilated uh, car, meaning the windows are down, it's only been parked for five minutes, uh, we're at approximately 100 degrees inside this vehicle. This vehicle to my left, uh, the vehicle has been parked here for an eight hour shift and it's showing at over 120 degrees in the vehicle. And detective, what kind of tips do you have for motorists to remind them that they have a child in the back seat? Well, most of us feel naked without a watch or a purse or something that we have um, on us uh, on a daily basis at all times. Um, I suggest if you're going to place a child in the back seat of the car, especially if it's one child, not two, to place something of value that you will need either during your trip or when you get to where you're headed in the back seat with the child, such as a purse or a briefcase, a laptop, um, any type of equipment or something that you're going to need for where you're going. Uh, you could do this on every trip, anywhere you go, whether you have children or not. Train yourself uh, to always place the items uh, in the back seat where your children's uh, car seat or where they normally sit. That way when you get to where you're going, you're, it's your routine to get out of the vehicle, open the back door and get your items out. And finally, what about children on buses? I would, I would put a safety net in there. Always double check uh, the time that your child should be off the bus. If you're not at home, make sure they have to check in either with you on, the, on a cell phone or with a neighbor every day uh, that they're coming home. Whether or not they're on a school bus or they're out with friends, it's, it's always good to have a safety net of, of neighbors. Uh, surrounding uh, nosy neighbors are great because they're going to help you out with everything from uh, preventing burglaries uh, to assisting you with child care. Detective Melissa Parker with the Fulton County Police Department. Always great information. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks again for having me. Now, if you see a child left unattended in a locked car, please call 911. The fire department remembers and honors two of their own with two state-of-the-art life-saving engines. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega has our story. Shania, fire station number five, and here at 23, now each have a brand new fire engine. The strength and performance of these engines are top of the line, but what makes them even more special is the fact that they are dedicated to two fallen firefighters from the Fulton County Fire Department. It was a moment of remembrance Ladies and kids. celebration. Oh. One of the greatest tributes we can demonstrate to our fallen is through the dedication of fire engines, the equipment which firefighters ride upon daily. Felix Roberts and Harold Hoot Gibson paid the ultimate price and died in the line of duty. Roberts answered his last call in 2007 and Gibson in 2011. Memories of the two were shared as the fire department marked the dedication of the new fire engines. It gives us a great pleasure and honor to see that they remembered him and his life wasn't wasted. It, he died doing something he loved. Uh, 
with that, it's just showing that they remembered him just like we remember him, and it just keeps it going, and it makes it a wonderful uh, pleasure just to know that he gave his life doing something he loved. County leaders, including Commissioner Rob Pitts and William Bill Edwards, were at the ceremony to show their support. These trucks symbolize the dedication and service of these two men. And when these trucks are departed, these trucks will bear their name. And even after death, Hoot and Felix will continue to answer the call of this county. The two new Spartan Gladiator fire engines have pumps that can extract more water from hydrants and put out fires faster. The trucks also have LED lights, which require less power and maintenance. The engines emit less emissions and the air conditioning units are more efficient. The fire engines were purchased with capital funds for about $400,000 each. Chief Larry Pugh says that's an amazing deal, especially since these engines will increase efficiency and safety for the public and crew. The department says these engines were a long time coming since the average age of their fleet is 16 years old. Reporting in South Fulton County, I'm Priscilla Ortega for FGTV. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, voters are back at the polls for the primary runoff elections. Early voting is available at nine locations across the county from now until July 18th. On Election Day, July 22nd, you will have to go to your assigned precinct. No matter when you vote, you must have proper ID. When voters go to their respective polling locations, whether it be during early voting when they can vote anywhere or on election day when they have to vote in their own precinct, they need to bring some sort of photo identification. That can be either driver's license, tribal ID, military ID, any kind of government issued ID, or if they need uh, some uh, vote, voter identification, they can come to our office and we can provide that for them. In addition to statewide runoffs, the county ballot includes a district commissioner seat, a superior court judge for the Atlanta Judicial Circuit, a municipal court judge in Roswell, and two city council races in Johns Creek. You can check out the candidates on the ballot on the county or secretary of state's websites. The Fulton County Government Center is packed as the newest inductees into the state bar of Georgia are sworn to serve. And I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Georgia. So help me God. Congratulations, each one of you. Fulton Superior Court Judge Craig Schwall administered the oath to the 100 lawyers who completed their Juris Doctorate degree. Welcome to the Georgia Bar Association. Attorney and keynote speaker, Attorney Miles Alexander, offered this advice to the young graduates. I think the important advice I have is to really care, care for their clients and pretend they are their clients and to go out in the community and do good things which will get them clients or to do good work in organizations where they don't need clients because they already have one, the organization they're working for. Clerk of Superior Court, Tina Robinson, certifies and processes the results from the Georgia Bar Exam. For many of the new attorneys and their families, it is a noble and proud achievement. It feels uh, pretty good. Um, I will say this is a hard and long road, uh, a lot of studying, a lot of determination, um, but uh, it's definitely a honorable feat and it's something that I will always treasure and um, hopefully I will um, achieve successes in this uh, profession. The new attorneys must take the oath in the circuit in which they intend to practice law. Children take part in the police department's public safety camp 911. As a part of the five-day educational program, children get hands-on experience in fire safety, self-defense, and crime prevention. Camp 911 is a program that's jointly coordinated with the public safety departments of Fulton County. It's a program for youth from ages 9 through 12 uh, to have an opportunity to learn about public safety. The campers got a close-up look at the state-of-the-art equipment used to keep them safe. We learned that, to, that 
Fulton County is developing new ways to find the bad guys. For example, the Bearcat behind me and the helicopter, we have new systems on it. The thing I really liked was the helicopter and how they don't really go, they don't go as high as airplanes because they have to look for, if they're looking for a person, then they have to go low, kind of low to the ground to actually see them. Um, and another thing is that they have a camera that they can see it at night in the woods if a bad person is trying to get away. If you'd like to get your child involved in next year's summer camp, start now. The yeah, application right. is available online at FolsonCountyGA.gov slash camp dash 911 and still to come residents in one community prepare for their annual back to school bash we'll explain in our district by district coverage next you're watching Fulton today the planning is underway for one huge back to school block party and civic honors are given to leaders in the community. Here's this week's district by district coverage. We begin with Chairman John Eves as he brings greetings to the fourth annual Spirit of the League Awards Luncheon at Atlantic Station. The District 1 Commissioner applauded the work of the honorees and the Atlanta Urban League itself. The organization recognizes individuals who have overcome significant challenges yet have managed to achieve success and give back to the community. The Urban League in Greater Atlanta is doing great work in our community, in our county, and our cities in terms of addressing workforce readiness needs, um, working with young people, people who are homeless, uh, re-entry, jail re-entry, and so they're a great partner in our community. So TV and film actress Terry Vaughn was one of the honorees at this year's event. The Tyler Perry Films cast member currently operates an Atlanta-based acting school. The Atlanta Urban League hosts the event to motivate people to reach their highest human potential. In District 5 this week, we continue our in-depth look at the many highlights of the Fulton County Aviation Community Cultural Center. Our focus is the Gallery of Flight exhibit. Titled Ascending African American Pioneers of Flight, the exhibit features historic images and memorabilia of trailblazers in aviation. Despite bias and segregation, the talented men and women featured in the exhibit courageously soared above racial barriers to become the first African Americans to have careers in aviation. Captain John Bailey is one of those pioneers who was featured in the exhibit. For us, it uh, symbolizes recognition of uh, the achievements of African Americans in aviation that perhaps were finally accepted uh, as professionals, uh, when when I first started, uh, it was uh, felt that we were always tested to to ensure that we were qualified. Yeah. But I think this symbolizes, uh, recognize that perhaps we finally reached that level of recognition that we don't have to prove ourselves over and over again. Hopefully, as we move forward, that this can be a venue for for more of the community people of Fulton County to come here and perhaps if you have an interest in aviation that you can get some training and education in the aviation uh, career field. Ascending the African American Pioneers of Flight exhibit will be featured in the Gallery of Flight at the Aviation Community Cultural Center until December 11th. District 6 Commissioner Joan Garner is getting ready for the annual Year of the Boulevard Back to School Community event. The commissioner, along with county staff, met with City of Atlanta leaders to plan this year's party. Garner has partnered with Atlanta Councilman Kwanzaa Hall for the outreach initiative since it started. Government is supposed to be here for the people, by the people, and doing things with the people. And that's what we've decided to do in partnership with Commissioner Joan Garner. We're really thankful that the county has stepped up uh, to offer all the wonderful services that many people don't know. Um, counties can provide to citizens. Partnering with uh, Councilman Kwanzaa Hall to really target and identify citizens that really need and depend on our services. It's, I think it's, it's healthy for the county, it's healthy for the city of Atlanta, and I would think overall it's healthy for the human being that we're affecting. The event helps families in the old Fourth Ward area prepare for the school year 
several county departments will be on site to serve the community. For more information, visit YoBoulevard.com. And finally, in District 7, we take one more look at the South Fulton Demonstration Garden. Last week, we shared with you about the tour students and seniors took of the garden at the South Fulton Maintenance Operations Center. This week, we want to introduce you to the young man who built two birdhouses, a bathhouse, a bee house, and a bench for the garden. John Bradford Smith is trying to become an Eagle Scout, and he chose to create something for the garden. It took a year to plan and execute, and he enjoyed every moment of it. I love it. It's educational. It teaches children about nature. It's great because all of this te new technology, all of this, it shows how simple life can be. The kids saw butterflies and various flowers, but it appears the fish painting exercise was the most fun and educational for many. I got to do something that people in um, China did. They, after they caught a fish, they took the, um, they painted it, and then they did an imprint of it, and then they ate it. And you are welcome to take a look at the garden with your family. The facility is located at 7472 Cochran Road in College Park. And when we come back, raising awareness about too much sun. Stay with us. You're watching Fulton Today. Health professionals say when taking any kind of medication the wrong way, it could cause more harm than good. That's the lesson seniors learned during a medication safety presentation at the Darnell Senior Multipurpose Facility. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, seniors are twice as likely to go to the emergency room for adverse drug events. It could cause, you know, ultimately it could cause adverse reaction dizziness, which might make them at risk for falling. Um, also, um, it could just make them sick. They could face hospitalization or just be uncomfortable. Experts recommend you write down all of your prescription and non-prescription drugs you take and have that information readily available. You should also use a pill counter or pill pack so that you know what medications you've taken that day. The Office of Aging hosted the seminar. For more information on programs and services available for seniors, you can call the Star Line at 404-613-6000. Well, here's our annual reminder about the dangers of too much sun. This is UV Safety Awareness Month, and health officials are reminding people that too much exposure is dangerous. Patrice Harris is the medical director for the Department of Health and Wellness. Ma'am, welcome back to Fulton today. Thanks for having me. Well, we're talking about UV or ultraviolet light. Can you tell everybody why people should limit their exposure? Ultraviolet light or ultraviolet radiation comes from the sun, and it also comes from some man-made sources such as tanning beds. And we know that ultraviolet radiation or ultraviolet light is a known carcinogen. That means that we know that ultraviolet light can cause cancer. And so what are some of the side effects of just too much exposure? Well, certainly I'm sure all of us have seen folks who have been out in the sun too long and the side effects can range from aging skin, dry skin, very wrinkled skin. You can see folks with a lot of dry, discolored skin, uh, spotted skin. Uh, but certainly the worst and most serious consequence of sun exposure is cancer. And doctor, what about those tanning beds? Are they safe? Tanning beds are a source, a man-made source of ultraviolet light, ultraviolet radiation. Tanning beds should be avoided because ultraviolet radiation is the known uh, risk factor for cancer, particularly skin cancer, and the most serious form of skin cancer is melanoma. And what should people do if they are concerned about skin cancer? Well, certainly the skin is the largest organ on the body, and folks should really look at their skin, examine their skin, um, in the same way that women do self-breast exams every month. 
folks should look for any changes in moles, any new moles. Just really take a look at the skin to see if there are any changes. If folks see any changes, they should go to see their doctor immediately. And doctor, let me get your final thoughts. Well, I just want folks to know that it is the summertime and it's been a long, rough winter. And probably uh, the first thing we want to do is get out and enjoy the sun. We can get out and enjoy the outdoors, but we have to do it safely. We need to wear sunscreen. We need to wear hats. We really need to limit our sun exposure. Always great information, Dr. Patrice Harris. Thank you so much for your time. Goodbye, Shania. Thanks for having me. Now, if you want more information on how you can protect yourself from the dangers of the sun, visit cdc.gov and search sun safety. Health workers celebrate another successful National HIV Testing Day. The Department of Health and Wellness held multiple testing sites all around the county. The mobile testing sites were set up at convenient locations like gas stations and inside shopping centers like the Mall West End. People were tested for HIV and sexually transmitted infections for free. Oh, the test was real quick and simple, and it's good to get a test to make sure your body's okay. But it was real simple and easy. Got some nice people in there, too. We take blood. We also test for syphilis. And you'll get those results in about 20 minutes or so. So it's very easy. Health officials say testing leads to treatment. Treatment leads to lower rates of transmission and better health outcomes. That if you're HIV positive, you still need to know because we have different medicines out here now that people are now living healthy with HIV. So it's important that you know so that you can live, especially if you're HIV positive. County health leaders recommend adults with high risk behaviors like drug use get tested every three to six months. If you want more information on getting an HIV test, you can contact the Health and Wellness Department at 404-612-1211. And still to come, breaking the silence with magic. We'll explain. Magic shows at the library are helping children to re-spark their interest in reading. The Magic Show at the Northside Branch Library is part of the Fizz Boom Read program. All the events are science related and motivate the children to come to the library and read this summer. I use a lot of science experiments in this show that, uh, that I've gotten out of library books that they can go check these same books out that I got, make the same experiments at home like the triangle trick that we did in the show and the evaporating water trick. All these are found in library books that they can check out here in the media center. So it's, uh, it's, it's rather simple and uh, it, hopefully it just gets them encouraged to at least get a library card, keep reading during the summer and then go back to school in August, you know, still tuned up with reading. There's lots of good books and it has, you can, you can get inspired to write your own book and it's just walking into your own adventure. The Fizz Boom Read program runs until August 1st. You can sign up for the events at any library in the county. And finally, children get a very special visit from a very popular crime fighter. McGruff. McGruff, the crime fighting dog and an officer with the Fulton County Police Department visited the Bowen Bankhead Branch Library. The officer read a book to the children about how to stay safe this summer. Uh, we taught the kids today about um, strangers, about um, bullying, about um, gun safety, and about um, just staying safe overall. A stranger is somebody you don't know and you need to stay away from strangers because they can hurt you and bullies can hurt your feelings. McGruff will visit other libraries throughout the summer. For a schedule of all events, go to the library system's website at afpls.org. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to hear from you about the stories and programs right here on FGTV. Go to our website to take a survey or email us. The address is fgtv.feedback at fultoncountyga.gov. You can also follow us on twitter.com slash fgtv and find us on Facebook. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shawnee Chavis. Thank you for joining us. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County. <laughs>